Welcome back to Film Smart. In this episode, we are going to review some movies that are coming up in the coming months and that we're looking forward to because it's been a slow movie. I don't even know. I would say Season? week, but not really. Uh, it's, <laughs> and it's been slow since like, Jul- I mean, the end of July. I mean, ever since. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I mean, there was a little thing at D23, but yeah, whatever. They didn't release anything, so who cares? Um, I'm not going to get excited about what people saw. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see I want to see it myself. Yeah. And then we'll talk. Um, so we're going to look at some movies uh, that are coming out. First, we're going to start with Black Mass, uh, the real uh, true life story of the gangster Whitey Bulger, who was uh, like a an Irish, he was, an, he was, you know, Irish American. And he's still alive, actually. He was only arrested four years ago. Uh, but he was a gangster in like the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I mean, and he worked with the FBI. And they kind of they used him to help him find other people, kind of like you know, almost think of the Suicide Squad, bad people to get even. get other bad people. Yeah, um, but really he was worse than the people he was getting. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I mean, he was terrible, um, or is terrible. And so th- this is like a uh, Johnny Depp's kind of comeback, I guess. Yeah. Some people are saying um, with those ghostly eyes and that face. Yeah, it was creepy. Um, oh, after many flops, he finally looks like he's going to be good in a movie. Well, finally he's doing something a little he's not doing something that's sci-fi he's not doing something yeah. that's that's why I didn't like him because I always felt like he just did the same weird role it was he, like he yeah. was playing yeah a, the same character in a hundred different costumes yeah, like Jack Sparrow got him an Oscar nomination the first one and then he's like I'm gonna keep doing it and I don't blame yeah. him it made a bunch of money but I, I don't know it's a certain point and he's that's the one role at least it doesn't annoy me in those movies are not good but he doesn't annoy me and then you have Transcendence. And, oh, no, I know. Right? And then, <laughs> then you have um, Alice in Wonderland, and that just was a big eye roll. That whole entire movie, and then you add him in Into the Woods, and it was kind of oh, and he was creepy, weird, and that. And then I didn't like that movie. And, uh, and then there was that one with Chloe Grace Moretz that took place in the seventies, where he's a vampire. Dark Shadows. Yeah. Oh God. I mean, <laughs> he, he probably did whatever somebody just, pitched to him. He was like Adam Sandler. Like they start off good, and then just like. Blah, 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 in the last few years, <laughs> just a fart. Um, but yeah, this one looks very good, and it looks like a return. And it comes out, I, th- I want to say, the eighteenth of September, so very soon. Uh, what did you think? Or did, what did you, your anticipation? I thought it looked really interesting. I was glad to see him in a role, yeah, that wasn't weird because I don't know, it's different. And when you see somebody out of their comfort zone and they strive at it, it's really good to see how they've grown as an actor. Mm-hmm. So hopefully he gets well. Yeah, hopefully this really is a comeback, and the trailers don't just look good, and we all go, "Well, that's the end of his career." <laughs> and um, and this movie's so close. I've heard that it's good, and you know, this is one of those movies where you, you know, the reviews yeah. are already coming in. And um, also, it kind of looks like it's taking some elements from Goodfellas, and you know, think movies like that, uh, taking like the end scene in the first trailer where he's laughing, kind of doing the what's so funny, that kind of something that. That happened in Goodfellas that reminded me of the scene. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen it. Um, so obviously it's taking some elements from the history of gangster films and putting it into a true story. Um, the next movie is Sicario. Uh, I think it comes out September, October. I don't. It's, I don't remember exactly. It's it's not far from now. It's in the next, uh, I'd say month. Um, this stars Emily Blunt, Benicio. October. What was it? October second. 2nd. Yeah, um, Emily Blunt, Benicio del Toro, and um, Josh Brolin, and you know it's about uh, like a what do you call what do you call them the drug the drug agency the DEA yeah the Is DEA that it? Like, I, I, yeah <laughs> defense attorney yeah. Um, <laughs> defense attorney but yeah the people on fighting the drug war which has obviously become a, a the drug war has been something a very relevant topic I think because especially now that weed is being legalized in a lot of the country. And then you have all, all of these things going on, put people being put in jail for uh, immense amount of time for you know minor offenses, mm-hmm. drug war, kind of a big thing that's been happening in the last 30 years since the Reagan administration's kind of grown and grown and grown. Um, so I, it's an interesting, very timely uh, topic. I mean, this movie could have been made at any time in the last 30 or so years. Um, and then, you know, it kind of the Sicario, they say, is a hitman in um, Mexico. They didn't say in Spanish. They said in Mexico. So. Yeah, maybe that's just a Mexican slang or something. And uh, so I don't... I think there's going to be like a Benicio del Toro is after them. or they, the Isn't he like a traitor? 
Yeah, that's what I was getting the sense. But yeah. I was like, but I was like, I don't know. That seems too convoluted. Like, yeah. And I, I feel like this movie's trying to be realistic. And if you're going to do realistic, you don't put somebody in the DA and then be like, oh, psych. Psych. <laughs> 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 okay. I don't know they just. Seems... I am the drug lord. So maybe I, I, I love know. twists like that. But yeah, you're right. I like it, twists. It too... But it just I don't know. I'm... That movie seems really realistic. Like in Memento, he was talking about the guy the whole time. He was the guy, Sammy Jenkins, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. Oops, that... Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, that's a cool premise in a lot of movies, but I don't know that. Whatever. But it, Emily Blunt looks great. Ben, Benicio del Toro, Dash Bruno look great. I'm excited for that. And obviously Benicio, like we were just saying, he looks like the, he's going to be the villain. Uh, the next film is The Danish Girl, starring Eddie Redmayne and. Um, Alicia Vikander, and it's actually I think it's pronounced Alicia. She's really? not Alicia because she's from Sweden. Oh. Um, and we obviously I loved her in Ex Machina. She was uh, a phenomenal. phenomenal. Yeah, <laughs> she was. And old. then Eddie Redmayne was phenomenal in Jupiter Ascent. Uh, <laughs> in, sorry, in um, the Theory, theory of Everything. Of everything. Uh, so this trailer I thought, which was just released a few days ago, I thought really looked good and another timely movie yeah it was like it's so relevant too very relevant after we've seen with Caitlyn Jenner and Laverne Cox and all of these transgender women uh, and, and men and these different stories that the teenagers have been going through mm-hmm. and you know it's a big issue in this country and around the world I, you know apparently so uh, this is very timely and it's interesting because it takes place so long, yeah, long ago. ago yeah um, but what were, what were your thoughts on this trailer I don't know, I, it, pretty much exactly the same as yours. I love I love both of them. I think I kept saying throughout watching the trailer that she was going to be a huge star. Because mm-hmm. she's, oh, oh, she's so good. And yeah. you just want to see her in everything. Yeah. She's like, I never saw Man from Uncle, but I am going to make sure to see that I just got really inactive on seeing movies. Oh, I, oh yeah. Yeah. I see that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've oh, yeah. missed some things too. Eddie Redmayne, when he put on that dress, it was so believable that he really wanted to become a woman. And I thought, yeah, that's so perfect that they're portraying it on a film and it makes it more understandable for people who don't necessarily understand how Caitlyn Jenner might feel or how Mm -hmm. Laverne Cox might feel or how anybody who's going through the same thing might feel so when they do this when they make films like this it makes people feel like it's okay to be me Mm -hmm. you know because we there's a lot of judgment placed on people who aren't yeah that transgenderism or whatever you call it It isn't something new yeah it's it's that's been around for a long time so I think it's great the next film is an action film uh, Spectre uh, the new James Bond Dude. film, and you know, you, if you've noticed, a lot of these movies have had like a best picture type of thing going on, and actually, all of these movies do, um, because even Spectre, if you remember, there were talks about Skyfall being nominated for best picture, possibly. So obviously, this movie could be no different. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved the first trailer of Spectre. The second trailer did absolutely nothing for me. Um, so I'm, I'm just being honest. You're but, right. But um, Christoph Waltz, I'm excited for. He was the one thing in that trailer that I was like, okay. Because I really like Christoph Waltz. I'm excited for him because he's such a great villain. Um, or even when he's playing the hero, like in Django Unchained, he's still kind of sinister. Um, but yeah, I love to do that movie. But I'm looking forward to seeing him. And I love when they keep him in the dark. And the way it's shot is so cool. I think the guy's name is Lubeski. Lubus, I don't remember how to pronounce <laughs> it. But he's he's in a lot of movies. And he's great. And he does, Apparently he has a unique style for every movie. So it's not, he's not one of those guys that you can be like, oh, that's definitely him. Mm-hmm. You, you have no idea until you, which I think is great. Because I think having a style is great, but I also think having no style, yeah, being, but being unique to every film, is that's another great thing. So you can do either of those things. It's just when you have no style, but also you're not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Plenty of style, just garbage. So uh, the mo- movie looks great. Uh, what's your anticipation of the, for this film? Very high. I've never really been into James Bond all that much, but I think this is the time where the movie's actually coming out when I have interest in yeah. a James Bond movie. So this will probably be the beginning of my fandom, and then that'll spark me to go watch all the rest of them. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited I mean, for all of them. And this movie's going to make a bunch. I mean, the last one made a bunch. I think the talk of Idris Elba and all of the, you know, the writer that was saying he was too street or whatever, all of this coming oh, out, God, I think yeah. that's going to draw in more people. I think it's all of the controversy surrounding the movie. Which really isn't surrounding the movie, but the character of James Bond yeah. in general. And then with the Sony hacks, when they said they were looking into Idris Elba last year. So, I mean, all of this is just going to... And Daniel Craig is nearing his end. This is his second-to-last film. 
could be his last. We don't know, but this is the second to last he's signed on for. And also, you know, the bidding war uh, we've talked about where Sony could be losing the rights to James Bond because their uh, license is uh, ending. So who knows? Um, well, is, I mean, this, who knows what will happen. I hope it's not the last one he's in because he's that's phenomenal. Yeah. I want him to do one more at least. He's the only James Bond I'd consider James Bond. Yeah, like I didn't, you know, watch Roger Moore. I mean, I've seen some of the old ones, but I, I, haven't, I have to watch them again. Uh, the next film is The Martian. Um, this is coming from, similar to Johnny Depp, a, in the case now, the director of somebody who's been on a really off streak the last several years with, uh, I, people always say Prometheus. I have to be careful because that had a divide. So it's almost, you have to be careful saying that. So a lot of people liked it. A lot of people didn't like it. So I'll give them, I'll we'll just put that in the middle area. But then there is definitely a bad area and that's the counselor and so I, there's other films, but it, this is somebody who's. I, I think a lot of people are worried about uh, directing, especially since this is a high budget uh, sci fi film. Excellent cast. Counts right an excellent cast. You know, so, <laughs> and, you know, Exodus is another one. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot about that, that. So, I mean, this guy who's in recent year, recent memory, has really put great casts in movies. You had Christian Bale, Joel Edgerton, Sigourney Weaver. He makes pretty well-casted garbage. Yes, yes. And then it was just... So I I think that this one will be good. I have hope for this one. I'm hearing good things about it. I mean, Matt Damon, Kate Mara, uh, Donald Glover. It's such a weird cast, too. Like, those three in a movie? And yeah. then who else is that? Um, oh, the guy from uh, The Newsroom. Chris... I don't remember what his name is, but, you know, from Dumb and Dumber... He's in. I mean, it's such a weird cast, but um, I'm definitely looking forward to it because I love sci-fi. I mean, it's probably my favorite genre. Um, so I, I interesting. I, I thought it was interesting to see Matt Damon and uh, Jessica Chastain that, in another yeah. movie together, very similar to Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah, I was like, but okay. I love <laughs> It looks like a movie that's going to be funny too because he's yeah. kind of making light. He's yeah, some of the jokes he has while he's on Mars. You know, he's stuck on a planet by himself, and he has to grow food, and still there's comedy. I, I guess you, the only thing you can do is look up, because... Maybe, maybe that'll save Ridley, is having a little levity. Prometheus, very serious movie. Counselor, serious garbage. Exodus, serious <laughs> guy. I mean, just... So, I, hopefully this will be something, putting a little levity into it and making it a little funny. That's probably why he brought in Donald Glover and, you know, uh, Matt Damon, who can be very funny. Um... So, yeah, who knows? Maybe there'll be a reference to Interstellar. Um, it's funny. Um, Didn't this happen before? <laughs> <laughs> Have we, wasn't I stranded on a planet <laughs> before? <laughs> Just last year? Lord. How many times will you keep doing this to me? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ooh, he can't. He needs to get it together. Um, and then the next film is In the Heart of the Sea. Uh, that's a film that was supposed to come out, I believe, the end of March 23rd or something last year, or March 17th, something around that time. Uh, of the, or this year, and I remember seeing trailers for it in like November, December of 2014, and then, you know, I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Chris Hemsworth's in it, and uh, Ron Howard, and then they pushed it back to December, and it wasn't because it was they needed to rework things or anything. It was because they saw that this was an Oscar-worthy, Oscar potential film, uh, so they put it. They decided to push the date back in December. I don't know why they had to push it back that far. So yeah. They could do October, but that's also, I mean, I'm, come on. But they pushed it back to December, and uh, they've only given us one trailer. But I'm just in awe that the Moby Dick, it's, you know, it's about the Moby Dick story, and it's all true, and or I mean, a lot of it's true. Um, it has Thor and Spider Man in it. Tom Holland is in it. Um, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, I was telling Josh, you know, the sound quality on that film looks yeah. really great. When you see it, the things falling, <laughs> and then when you it see felt like you were there, yeah, yeah. And Moby Dick's going, <laughs> like when you're in the theater and you see that trailer, it's just be scary. <laughs> it would be a horror movie. <laughs> Sperm whales are. Oof, I did a project on those in second grade. I remember it vividly. <laughs> I that's a pro- I did that ten years Nightmares ago. Nightmares. I remember whales. those sperm whales very well. But uh, yeah, that film. I, I'm really excited for it, actually. It's a film I didn't think I'd be excited, but I'm excited. Um, any thoughts on that? 
Uh, not really more than you said, but we had to read the actual, the actual <laughs> like text in class. Garbage. Ter- don't even read it. If you have the option, don't. But that the trailer when it bought everything that I read to life, it actually looked interesting. Yeah. When while reading it was the worst thing I've ever read. Maybe they'll make a story about a, a homicidal whale interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they'll make that a true story about a homicidal, homicidal whale. sperm whale. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sperm whales they get into wars un- deep underwater with giant squids. Sperm whales and killer whales are two of like apex prey. Like nothing eats them; they can't be beaten. Like even when squids beat them, squids they don't really <laughs> squids don't really kill them. Like they can't eat them. Yeah. They all they eat giant squid. Giant squids, which we think are these, oh uh, these creatures we can't destroy or whatever. These huge, amazing creatures that we barely even seen. They eat them, and they have scars on them from the claws of the giant squids when they get in wars with them. So I mean, Ooh. I don't know. You don't make that interesting, but. This movie better be. Well, I hope there's a giant squid too. Yes. <laughs> that's how they survive the battle. A giant squid comes and takes Moby Dick out. That's it's like a Pirates of the Caribbean, the giant squid, the Kraken comes. <laughs> so, okay, I think it's starting to get fake. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it looks great. Then the next, uh, and this is in the 1820s in the Heart of the Sea. Now we're going to the Revenant, which is uh, 18, maybe, this might be the 1820s too. Maybe I mixed them up, but uh, they're both in the 1800s. And the Revenant is with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy and Domino Gleason, and mm-hmm. oh, amazing cast! And, and then you have is that eighteen twenty? So the right, Revenant say the eighteen twenties. Hard to see is probably the eighteen forties or something, or eighteen fifties. Um, but you have the Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy, and it's about Leonardo DiCaprio gets like mauled by a bear, and he's with this group, this trio, or I don't know how many people, and they leave him behind for dead. But he survives, and he's on a path. I love a good revenge story. And he comes something. back for him. And then when you see the trailer, and it's just the way they filmed it with all the the when they were fighting the Native Americans and on the horses and shooting people from the trees, and the way it, the camera panned and tracked everything, I, I loved it. The way it, you felt like you again, it, was, it felt like you were there. The way it was filmed, and you know that this I, apparently this has been a miserable shoot. Uh, similar to Mad Max. Yeah, well, I heard. I think I heard somewhere that there were like lawsuits being filed for unsafe Probably. working conditions. I was Probably. just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. the more real it is, I guess the. Yeah, I'm, a, the better I'm glad there's some out. lawsuits filed. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't see a movie unless there's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, the trailer. I mean, you know, the trailer didn't tell you much, but if you know what the premise, like I, were, I knew what the premise was before it, and I watched it, I was like, oh. My God. Yeah, if he he told me what it was about but when I saw it without knowing, you're literally just like, oh, so a man kills a bunch of people, <laughs> and he's basically the coolest person ever because he just goes around on a horse. But it looks like a, like a all the tribulations he goes through. It's gonna be amazing, and um, and it's the same director as Birdman, the, uh, Alejandro Gonzalez in Ooh. Um Ooh, and he's back know. again. I tell you, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio is back again, and he just. Always there, and this might be the one that'll give him the Oscar. Hopefully, if he a movie deserves was, it. <laughs> I mean, if he couldn't get an Oscar for Gilbert Grape, but honestly, <laughs> I mean, this will probably be the one if he's going to get one. But I mean, every year there has been somebody that's probably that's been better than him. This year might be different, though. This might be the one where he. Now I'm the best. Okay. <laughs> he must have said something to somebody because he's been snubbed a lot. <laughs> he, yeah, he must have said something on Twitter. <laughs> Maybe there's always kind of like a vote split. That could be kind of a, you know, when you put a bunch of votes into him, but then, uh, but it's kind of, it kind of equals out, and then the person has like two more votes, and then they won. That was, so who knows. <laughs> um, anyway, but yeah, that movie looks great, and apparently, like I said, it's been a miserable shoot, and people have been angry, and it's, they've all, they don't use any lighting, so they, all the light in that film is natural light. Hmm. They don't do any, no sets, obviously, you know, clearly that wasn't on a set, but uh, they didn't use any artificial light it was all uh, real light so they didn't you know need any wow, yeah, it was very different when you watch it you're like well that's different because the way yeah the, the way it was filmed was so you're in action with everybody mm-hmm. and everything kind of it's kind of like a constant point of view you almost feel like yeah you know somebody's watching it like you're in a point of view shot and i'm glad it wasn't of... all i mean like it was kind of shaky but it was shaky because you're doing it wasn't just shaky cam no no it wasn't which shaky. is annoying oh god no it wasn't like paranormal activity. Yeah, you're just <laughs> like I'm gonna throw up because it's too yeah. much shaky, and because I'm disgusted with you. But 
<laughs> because we're getting garbage fed to us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for this movie. And uh, one more movie I don't have on the list, but I wanted to just real quick, because it just released the trailer, uh, Beast of uh, No Nation, uh, the Idris Elba Netflix uh, original film, which is going to be in select theaters, I think October 16th is the same day it's released on Netflix and it's the same the director is the guy who did the first season of True Detective which I loved the first mm. season second season but the first <laughs> season I, I really loved uh, he didn't do the second season so I'm not gonna I'm not trying to blame him or anything for that um, but you know it's about like a African warlord who gets these boys you know he murders their families and whatever and has them join his army and they fight and do terrible things and he's kind of manipulative obviously as a grown man yeah. be on young impressionable boys uh and it's like an they don't just say what the nation is but it's kind of i feel like it's a it's a not a real true story i don't think but it's takes a lot of true stories with it like even if yeah. you like i'm not saying this is a true story because i don't think i think it was called fake but you know the remember the coney 2012 thing oh yeah like this sounds just like that and the coney 2012 people are like oh it's fake or whatever it's like well, it's fake, but it's also real. That stuff goes on. Yeah, yeah. Like I, just because it's, really it's not happens. the Coney guy doesn't mean it's not happening. Like, I, whatever, who cares what the guy's name? It's a guy. Somebody's doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, so yeah, but I'm looking forward to that. That might be an Oscar t- contender, which would be interesting. I mean, it is released in theaters, but so um, Star Wars: The Force Awakens, and that's the last big one. And you know, like I always said earlier, that a lot of these, like I said, were best picture worthy or films that we were probably expecting to be best picture nominees um star wars also could be yeah, best i mean could. people forget the first star wars was Wars-y. nominated for best picture best director best actor in a supporting role special effects obviously so i mean very doable i mean people always count sci-fi and you know superhero and all that out but could easily be mm-hmm. If it's very, well, I shouldn't say easily, but it could be if it's very good. Let's not forget Lord of the Rings. That's crazy fantasy, and that's all been some of the most celebrated movies at the Oscars. Um, this is another movie where we don't really know that much about it. We know that the original <laughs> yeah, <know>. cast is <laughs> in it. And, oh, we know the villain is uh, Adam Driver, who's playing Kylo Ren, who's like a, he's a part of a group called the Knights of Ren, um, which, is an ex- which is in the Sith. Could be like a break off of the Sith I guess but Wait, there, so it isn't in the Sith? Huh. Kylo Ren kind of idolizes Darth Vader apparently it's like a cult yeah it's kind of like yeah it's kind of like yeah, like a neo-Nazi thing I almost kind of think of it like um, but yeah he's kind of he idolizes he's, they say he's like Luke except if Luke went bad he's just a lot like Luke I'm wondering I have a feeling kind of a feeling that he he's might be that, that he might be part of the Skywalker solo lineage or some somewhere he's either Luke Skywalker or he's Han and Leia or he's some other family member we don't know about Ooh, might be broken be, off whoa that'd be crazy um, so who knows what this guy is and then and then we know like uh, Gwendolyn Christie is playing the uh, Phasma uh, who's uh, that chrome stormtrooper you see and BB-8 and you have John Boyega who we saw with the lightsaber in the 16 second thing oh, on Instagram cool. which we thought would lead to a trailer by Force Friday but did nah. not <laughs> um, but yeah I'm, I'm very much looking forward to Star Wars obviously out of yeah, all of these films I don't films, think anybody couldn't be excited. out of all of these films I'm excited for all of these I mean you don't even know how excited for I am for The Revenant or Spectre but Star Wars it's Star Wars I'm the most excited mm-hmm. I'm extremely excited for Star Wars um, I love Star Wars and you know I got me into movies, so I I can't wait to see the return, especially with the original cast. We're getting away from away from that prequel era. era. I, it's funny I said error. I meant era, but what, it also was an, an error. Yeah. Uh, but so I get away from that error, and now Your we can garbage. jump forward with J.J. Abrams at helm, and I can't wait to see what John Boyega and Daisy Ridley and Domino Gleason, who's also mm-hmm. in this, uh, is he's playing a villain. Oh, and Oscar Isaac is in it. So, two of so X Machina yeah. characters. Everybody uh, in Hollywood's in this movie. Yes. So, and I'm Oscar Isaac it has to be, you know, there was it's like him and Michael Fassbender are just uh, neck and neck with this. Oh, and that just reminded me. One more film I have to talk about. <laughs> one more. I I couldn't believe. I am so excited for this movie. Macbeth with Michael Fassbender. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! They just released a trailer not too long ago. Him and Marion Cotillard. 
Oh my god, Josh. Oh, I haven't seen the trailer. I tell yet. you, a second right behind Star Wars. Like it, I, it beats every, it just right behind. I am so excited for Macbeth. Hmm. Um, and it's oh, oh my god, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for that movie because I, I love those two actors, and I just saw her in two days. One, oh, ooh, I I don't even know how to explain how excited, the way it was filmed, the action. It looks so brutal, and the way that oh, they look so sinister. Oh, I can't wait. I don't know if you, have you yes. read Macbeth. Mm-mm, not no, yet. I see. I read Macbeth, so I oh, I can't wait to see this movie. But Macbeth, that oh, okay, <laughs> all right. You know what to do: like, subscribe, comment, and as always, watch Macbeth.